Hello! Um, welcome to kind of a weekly sort of thing that I'm going to be doing now that I'm going to call Pen Talk because uh, I want to be cutesy like that. Basically what this is going to be is it's going to be me sitting here talking about uh, things that are new with me, doing kind of a weekly like sort of a mix between a what's in my bag and a weekly loadout, and then talking about some sort of thing, like having a discussion, an informative sort of discussion about something. This week it'll be about pens, but I'll talk a little bit more about this at the end. It, it could be about anything. So this week, the things I'm going to talk about are um, a new Etsy shop that I opened up, and then I'll do my kind of what's my bag thing, and then I want to talk about buying your second fountain pen. This is kind of something that's been talked about a lot, but I feel like, you know, there's there's very conflicting schools of thought, and I kind of want to talk a little bit about how I feel about those and what I personally would suggest. Having, you know, being sort of newly out of that new to fountain pen phase. So first, Etsy shop. Uh, I've started an Etsy shop. I um, opened it up yesterday, was well, Sunday, um, April 26th. And it is basically going to be selling uh, things related to traveler's notebooks. So currently there's just folders. I will be selling folders that will fit in either full-size Midori or field notes size or passport size traveler's notebooks. So I have a couple of those right now. Um, so this is kind of what they look like. This is a full-size Midori. This is a... oh, did I grab two passports? I grabbed two passports. Be right back. Uh, let's see if I can find. Oh, here we go. Okay. I thought I grabbed a field notes and it, I didn't. So this is a full size Midori. Here's a field note size, and then here is a passport size. So they're pretty basic. They kind of follow the same form factor of the ones that come straight from Midori. So on the inside, you have these two kind of flaps that are go all the way up to the top, and they overhang the top a little bit, so you don't have to worry about things falling out the side. And um, I put little notches in the top and the bottom so that your strings can slide right in there and that way they hold kind of securely and they don't wobble around all over the place. They're thick, um, durable sort of paper. Full disclosure, they're made out of file folders. So um, because I see all these cute file folders all the time, but I have no use for file folders, but they're so cute and I want to use them somehow. So I thought they make great traveler's notebooks and, or Traveler's Notebook folders. So they're pretty thick and heavy. A lot of them have kind of a glossy um, finish on them. So I think they were great. I've actually been toting around a prototype that I made uh, for, I don't know, about a week now. And this was before I kind of understood how, you know, to make sure that they folded properly. And it's holding up great. So <laughs> there's that. I was thinking eventually about um, doing ones there we go. So that um, it's along the bottom here, instead of being glued, it would be like a decorative sort of like stitch. I think that would be so cute. And kind of like a contrasting color with embroidery that, oh my gosh. So if you're interested in seeing something like that, let me know and I'll get on it. Uh, if no one, if there's no interest in it, then then obviously I won't, I won't give it a shot. But I think that would be so adorable. Anyway, these are up in my Etsy shop. I might be doing some other things as well. I've been playing around with making little bookmarks with like decorative little knots on the ends. I might every so often post a, like a notebook that I, a handmade notebook, but things like that will be not the norm. Uh, and, and who knows, there might be other things as well, but mostly it'll be folders because I really enjoy making them. And, um, and I think they, you know, I can use so many fun colored things and, and all that stuff. So I'll link that below. So feel free to go check it out and let me know if there's something else you'd like to see that um, you think isn't really being covered in the market that's already out there. So that's the first thing. Second thing. All right, so now I'm kind of my what's in my bag loadout kind of thing. I, I, I kind of want to do this sort of in a what's in my bag format because, you know, for me, female obviously, I carry around a purse most of the time because girl pants don't have useful pockets. So... My bag is really a reflection of what's being used. You know, sure, I have plenty of pens that are inked up that are not being used right now. Um, because, you know, I'm using them for an ink that I want to review, or I'm trying out the pen to review, something like that. Versus, like, what I'm actually really using is what's getting carried in my bag. So that's why I figure, you know, and it's not just pens. It's pens, paper, 
all kinds of things like that, uh, you know, kind of the whole EDC thing. So all of that kind of is reflected by what's currently in my bag. So I figured I would quickly go through my bag, kind of show what's what's in there, what I'm using, what I'm liking, what I'm not liking. Um, and then, my mom's calling me. Um, and so, so it won't be a review at all, but it'll kind of be just a brief kind of, you know, this is what I'm using, this is what I like, all that. It'll go smoother, hopefully, in the future when my mom's not calling me. So anyway, this is the bag that I'm using. This is from Timbuktu. It is the, I think it's called the Valencia Hobo Bag. It's, I don't know if they have this color anymore. It's kind of, I don't like the way they look now. They kind of have done away with the ones that have this really cute ruching on the front of them, which I think is adorable. Um, I really like this bag. It's a great shape and everything. Um, my biggest problem with it is that it's getting stained from my jeans on the back because I wear really dark wash jeans. So um, I'm kind of in the market for a new bag, actually. I really, you know, now that I'm working a, a grown-up job and I have some money, I kind of want to get a nice bag. But for me, it, so here are my requirements for my bag. It has to stand up on its own, which this doesn't, and it kind of drives me crazy how it kind of... Um, so it has to kind of, you know, stand up straight on its own. I want it to be long, straps to be long enough to be worn crossbody because I normally wear my bags crossbody. It doesn't have to be specifically a crossbody bag, but but I want that. I would really like a leather bag um, or at least something, you know, that's going to be really durable. I'm kind of sick of polyester, nylon kind of stuff. Um, I want a bag that will look better kind of the more it gets used. So I kind of am not interested in um, designer bags like Coach or Kate Spade. I mean, I love them but they just don't really fit with my aesthetic and lifestyle. Um, you know, I need a bag that's tough and I need it to wear well. Um, and I need it to be cute, which obviously is, is kind of, you know, a personal thing. But the one that I'm really looking at is Saddleback Leather, the Tote. Um, oh my gosh, why can I not think of... It's, it's the one that has kind of an open top and it kind of comes up at the bottom. I think it's just called the Tote. Um, I really love the way that looks. It's just so... So if anyone has one and loves it, let me know. Or if you have it and you don't love it, let me know why. Um, I'm looking at the small size specifically because I think the large is just way too big and I have no reason to carry around that much stuff. You know, I don't carry a computer with me anymore. So um, really I'm looking at, at the small size. And if you have it and love it, let me know. And let me know what color you have it in. And if you hate it, let me know um, why. Anyway, so this is the bag that I'm using currently. It's big, it holds a lot of stuff. So what I have in here is, this is just kind of things, you know, uh, pills and uh, girly things and chapstick and stuff like that. That's, I kind of, this bag only has one compartment. It's just a big old open bag. So I kind of have to segregate things so they don't flop all over the place. I have this little, um, it's kind of like one of those coupon accordion wallet things from Target that I really enjoy. I'm using it to, I'm kind of doing a cash envelope budget system right now, so these are my envelopes. So this is working great so far, and it's so adorable. Love it. Um, I have this cute little owly guy, this little owly coin purse from Jet Pens, which I really enjoy. And then uh, the thing we're all really waiting for. Uh, this is kind of what I'm using as my notebook um, cover. This has a couple of field notes in it. This is from Craft and Lore. I have a video on my channel of a of the unboxing, so I really should do an updated review soon because it's starting to really age nicely. Um, but that's what I'm using, and then let me grab my pens out of here, and then these are the pens I'm using. So let's look more specifically at this stuff because I know you guys don't really care about how adorable my wallet is. So the pens that I'm using right now, pretty much every day, is I have a Lamy Vista which I picked up from a brick and mortar store that's near here. It's in the Mall of America. Um, we live about a half hour to 45 minute drive from the Mall of America. So every so often we, we make it there and they have a Paradise Pen. And while I don't love Paradise Pen, um, you know, I really wanted one of these. So I picked up a Lamy Vista. It has a fine nib. It's inked with Pilot Blue Black um, because it's just a really solid color and works well for, for me at work. It performs okay on subpar paper. And then my other pen is a is my Tactile Turn um, Mover in teal. I have a Pilot Juice refill in here in coffee brown. Love the refill. I love this pen. Oh my gosh. I want one in titanium so bad, but I just don't have $140 to spend on a pen. Ugh. 
Um, anyway, highly recommend. This is another one that I have an unboxing video on my channel. Really need to get around to doing a review. So, okay. So here's my Craft and Lore notebook cover. Unfortunately, because I have kind of the sunlight here, it's hard to see, but it is actually developing a patina. Let's see, maybe if I open it, you can see the difference. So you can see the difference between the area. This is the area that's always covered up, and this is the area that's always exposed. So there is um, a decent difference in color. And I'm thinking that pretty soon here on a nice sunny day, I need to take my notebooks out of this and stick it in like the back of my car in the window to let it get some sun all day, and that would be great. So in here I have a couple of cards. It has a couple of card things. Um, and then I have two field notes that I carry with me on a daily basis. The first one, this is one of the Two Rivers designs. This one I'm just using as a weekly planner. So I kind of did my own weekly planner thing in it. So on this side I just have the week and then this page I left blank so that I can write down my to-dos. I basically only have about one page worth of to-dos for a week so this format works really well for me. And then this one is my kind of journal, everyday book, whatever. Um, and this is actually in, let me see if I can do this gracefully. So this folder, I mentioned that I've been carrying around one of these folders with me. This is that folder. So this is a field note size. It's in this kind of metallic-y thing. Um, so this, I just tied an elastic around my field notes. So I have, oh, I have just a, a piece of elastic that I've tied and I put it through the spine and I put it through this guy just to kind of keep it on there. So this guy has been awesome. I keep receipts and a little bit of cash in there and it's been working really well. Um, so then, and this is kind of a prototype bookmark that I've been working on. Um, so then this, this is one of the unexposed field notes. Oh my gosh, that is so bright. Oh, can't even. So this is one of the unexposed field notes. I've basically been using it just to kind of record what I do every day, just in bullet point format. I've, I want to be a journaler so bad, but I'm not a journaler. So basically I just kind of write down like, oh, I did this today, I did that today, you know, I, I ordered this thing or I called this person, just so I kind of have some record of what I got done on a particular day. So that's what's in there. So that's kind of what I'm using for paper and pens right now. Um, I don't think that that's going to be the setup much past tonight, really. I kind of have, I, I like kind of what I've been doing, but I need a little bit more space. So I've been thinking about changing up my notebooks a little bit, um, maybe getting an actual like printed weekly planner. My problem is just the, I love field notes, but the paper in field notes is not great with fountain pens. And so then I find myself not using my pens, so then I'm like, well, why do I have these fountain pens if I can't use them on anything? You know, the paper at work is awful. If, if I'm not using great paper for myself, then what's the point? Anyway, so next week it might be very different, but it will probably still be in this Craft & Lore folder, or holder because I have a traveler's notebook that I ordered, but it might not get here for another two weeks. I've been waiting for a while, so there'll be an unboxing once that happens. Don't worry. Um, okay, so now on to the kind of last topic. So I got an ask on my old blog, uh, FP Physicist, um, on Tumblr, about, you know, what, what would you suggest for a second fountain pen? And I know this is something that I think has been talked about on the Goulet Q&A, so it's been talked about, you know, multiple different places. And there's two kinds of schools of thought that people have on this. And let me see if I can find where I made my notes earlier. So uh, some people will say you should buy a bunch of cheap pens at first. Like you should, you know, try all kinds of things. Buy a bunch of cheap Chinese pens, buy some of the lower end, you know, European pens. Just try a lot of things because then you will kind of learn what you want before you, you know, spend a lot of money on a nicer pen. Um, and then there's people who say, why? You know, you, you basically, the amount of money that you spend on all those cheap pens is equivalent to just buying yourself a nice pen kind of as your like second pen, you know, or first pen. So you kind of have those people who are, you know, those, that's kind of the two sides of it. I think, I'm of the opinion that you should buy a couple of cheap pens first. I think probably your first three to five pens should be sub $50 pens. So I'm not saying you should buy a whole bunch of cheap Chinese pens or um, cheap whatever pens. But I do think that you should get a decent amount of pens under $50 because that will teach you what you like. You know, try a Safari. 
that'll teach you if you like that triangular grip. Because I feel like if you like safaris, then, you, you know, if that grip works for you, then you could say, okay, a vanishing point will probably work for me as well. Because they kind of have, the vanishing point forces you into that triangular grip. So that's an easier way to figure out, oh, either I do or don't like a vanishing point without having to buy one. Or, you know, you buy a Pilot Metropolitan, those have a huge step from the barrel to the section. So if you find that that step doesn't bother you, you know, you grip your pen pretty close to the nib, well then that, then you know that that's not something you have to worry about on later pens, you know. Or if it does bother you, then you know you need to avoid pens that have that. Um, things like that. So, you know, it can, it can help you figure out, do I like demonstrators, do I prefer, you know, snap caps, do I prefer twist caps, things like that. There's plenty of pens out there for under $50 that I think will allow you to really figure out what you want. And I feel like that's less discouraging because, you know, then you get to buy a pen every couple of months, maybe, depending on what your budget is. Versus if you say, okay, well, my first or second pen, I'm going to buy, you know, a $200 pen. Well, now you're going to have to wait a while and save up for that pen versus saying, okay, I can buy a pen now and, you know, in a couple months I can buy another pen and then in a couple months I can buy another pen and then I can, then I have a couple pens I can use while I save up for that nicer one. So that's why I kind of think that you should get a couple of more inexpensive pens first because you get to try out a lot of different things, figure out what you like, and it gives you kind of a good way to get into the hobby before you have to stop and save up to continue in the hobby. And once you have more pens, then you get to play with inks more. You know, if you only have one pen, you can only have one ink in it at a time. Versus if you have three pens, then now you can try three different inks at one time. And you get to explore that kind of part of it. And you get to try different nib sizes. You know, you can figure out what nib size you really like. Things like that. So I definitely am in the school of thought that you should probably spend... I'd say at least at least $50 total, probably close to $100 total on less expensive pens before you start thinking about buying a nicer pen. So a great second pen, I think, depending on what your first pen, in, pen is, um, you know, Pilot Metropolitan is a good one, Alami Safari is a good one, or Alami All-Star if you kind of want to, you know, take a step up a little bit. Um, Otherwise, I would suggest looking at like new old stock pens, maybe, um, if you think you might be interested in vintage stuff, or looking at, you know, Chinese pens that can be had fairly inexpensively, because then you can, you know, you can get a big, thick, fat one, you can get like a Jin Hao, what is it, 159 or whatever, um, the big Jin Hao one, decide if you like really big, heavy pens, you can get some thin pens, see how you like those, things like that. Um... So that would be my suggestion. I also think that kind of once you've hit that point when you are like, okay, I want to start thinking about buying a nicer fountain pen. I think that's also a good time to start thinking about getting a pen that's not a fountain pen, but is a nicer pen. You know, I, you know, I carry my Lamy Vista with me all the time, but I also carry my tactile turn with me all the time. And I don't regret buying this for a second, even though it's not a fountain pen. Because to me, once you've kind of gotten that taste for nice pens, I feel like you should always have a nice non-fountain pen as well. Because there's going to be times when you're going to have to use it. So, you know, whether it's... I had bought a Fisher Space Pen. So Fisher Space Pen's great. Um, you know, because it's a nice metal body, it's got decent refills, things like that. Or a Retro 51. Um, they have a whole line of ballpoint and rollerball pens. You know, there's the Tactile Turn pens. There's Keras Customs. There's all kinds of stuff. There's tactical pens if you're, that's your thing, which is not mine. Or, you know, there's things like there's a Lamy 2000 ballpoint pen or Lamy 2000 multi-pen. Or there's all kinds of other multi-pens out there. Things like that. Like, I feel like, like, once you've decided, okay, I can have a nice fountain pen, you should also start thinking about a nice non-fountain pen, which is something you don't hear from people a lot. But I use a non-fountain pen a lot in my daily life because I work in a place where I don't control the quality of paper and that's just how it goes. So, you know, that's kind of, that's my suggestion for when you start thinking about your second fountain pen. I didn't follow this at all, but, you know, full disclosure, my first fountain pen was a Platinum Preppy that came with a giant bottle of Maedler's ink, and I liked the Preppy just fine, but it was um, too broad of a nib on it. And then I went on Etsy and ordered a machined pen, which... Now that I look back at it, I'm like, oh my god, that was such a mistake. It was, um, 
it was a kit pen basically and that's where I really feel like I made the mistake like it it was nothing special and then after that I got a safari and then kind of took a, a more logical progression I got a safari and by that point you know I'd had a couple pens under my belt so I kind of knew what was going on and then after that I think I got a Nemesign which is another great inexpensive pen to try out um, and then I think I probably got a vanishing point after that so you know I was four pens in before I ever got you know a, a $100 plus pen um, and three of those pens were under 20 uh, under $50 so you know I kind of followed my own rules and I kind of didn't but you know hindsight's 2020 so that's kind of how I would approach it let me know if you think something different because um, I'd love to hear kind of what other people think. I know that there's, there are those two general camps, but otherwise, you know, there might be other opinions out there on kind of what the right path to take is. So, yeah. Um, so the, I'll kind of do this every week. Let me know what you'd like to hear about. Um, bear in mind that, you know, I don't know anything about vintage pens, but I can talk reasonably intelligently about ink. I can talk about pens. I can talk about paper. Um, and it doesn't have to be about those things. It can be about some other EDC sort of thing. It can be about anything. I, you know, remember I'm a recent graduate from a, a master's program. So if you are, you know, in college or you're in high school, maybe even and watching this and you want to know, you know, you have questions about things related to college or things related to grad school, I can answer those kinds of questions too. I have a degree in physics, so I can answer science questions. You know, let me know what you'd like to hear about. It doesn't have to be pen related. You know, it can be knitting related. That's the other kind of half of things I'll talk about. But just kind of let me know. What would you be interested in hearing about? Um, remember, I'm not an expert at anything, but I can talk somewhat intelligently about a lot of things. So um, otherwise, I'll just kind of do whatever comes to mind the day that I'm going to be recording this. So yeah, I think that's about it. Any important links will be down below. And yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, I think that's about it. All right, well, I'll see you guys probably next week for sure. Bye.